Do you ever avoid even starting to draw because you're afraid that your drawing just isn't going to be good enough? It'll be a waste of time. Or if you feel a drawing is actually turning out the way you wanted it to, do you then get really tense because you feel at any moment you're going to make the mistake uh, and you'll wreck it? Or do you feel like you spend more time erasing wrong lines than actually getting to draw your subject? Or do you find you often abandon drawings halfway through because, well, you get discouraged that they're not very good, that they're not going to turn out, and really they're a waste of time. You could do something else. And if you do manage to complete an artwork, do you hate looking at it and you manage to convince yourself that it's really no good and that anyone could have done better than that? All these things can be signs that we have an unhelpful perfectionistic mindset connecting with our creativity and our drawing in particular. You don't need me to tell you this is not a helpful mindset to have when we draw. It makes it hard for us to start, it makes drawing a tense experience for us and it really robs us of all the joy and pleasure that drawing should be giving us. It's good to have goals that we aim towards in our drawing. It's healthy to push ourselves in our skill development and the things that we try to do in our drawing. And it's very productive to self-critique our work in a positive, constructive way. But when we set ourselves standards so high that we're either always sure we're going to fail them or we're simply afraid to even try, and the whole thought of trying to be creative becomes discouraging and tense for us, then that's a problem. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. You might have guessed I know something of what I'm talking about now through experience, although it's a very different journey for different people. But there are some common things in struggling with a perfectionistic mindset, and I do know something about some of them. So in this video, I want to share five things that I have found extremely helpful in pushing through the unhelpful perfectionism I've had in my head. And they've really freed me up to have a lot of fun when I draw and to look forward to doing it without all that tension and pressure that I used to feel. So let's start with the first point. And the first one is this. Work out what is my inner voice saying? It's not helpful. And for me to start to say something louder to myself, that is more helpful. Look, let me make very clear with a disclaimer here. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist. I don't have any training in this. But it seems as if along our journeys in life, we come to understand the world and ourselves in certain ways. And some of these things we pick up directly from others, others we pick up indirectly, and some we just work out for ourselves as we go. And these understandings, these thoughts can often direct us in the sorts of things we do and how we feel about doing them. But when I come to draw, if I have thoughts that tell me, oh, don't even start, you can't do this then it might be helpful to create a new voice that I can listen to that answers back to that. My new voice might say things like, well, I can give it a go. There is no harm in that. Or if other people can learn to do this, why shouldn't I be able to learn to do it? Or if I practice, I can improve. Or if my thoughts tell me any drawing you do is just going to look terrible and you'll feel terrible about it then I can put different thoughts in my head about how my drawing is going to look, or at least how it's going to affect me. I could say, my first effort won't be my best. My first effort never is, so no pressure. Or, well, it's going to be a fun learning experience with however it turns out. And if I feel I'm unable to start a drawing, or I'm unable to persevere, or I'm unable to stay with a drawing, to the end or I'm unable to enjoy doing a drawing even, it can be helpful to try and ask why. What exactly is stopping me from sitting down and using the time I've got to draw? What's making it hard for me? Because the more precisely I can understand any reason I have for my behaviours, then the more precisely I can work out how can I change that if change is what I want to do. So that's the first point. Perfectionism is often connected 
with a fear of failure, with a fear of being shown to other people or ourselves as not being able to do something. So it can be very helpful to respond to those fears directly. Speak new things to ourselves that direct our art in the direction we want it to go. Well, my next four points all actually involve a pen. And my second point is finish every drawing. And the truth is no artwork can really be judged before it is finished. We can't possibly know whether it really is ruined or not, regardless of what our reaction tells us when we make a mistake. Lots and lots and lots of things that can go wrong in a drawing or at least are unplanned can be hidden by the end of it. And even though the mistake looks terrible at the time, no mistake ever looks as bad as the moment when we've just done it. What can't be hidden won't feel as obvious, won't look as obvious at the end. And the only way to expose this lie, that this one run, one line has ruined the drawing and wasted all my time, is to actually finish the drawing and prove that it wasn't really the disaster I thought it was when I did it and wanted to give up and stop. When I drew this Edinburgh street scene for one of my YouTube teaching videos, this was one of the last areas I drew. I was very happy with how it had turned out, but I made a mistake in bringing up this gutter too high and I didn't leave enough room down here for the detail on this ground floor and I had to leave it out. I remember at the time thinking, I've ruined it, I've ruined it. But of course, now that I don't have my reference photo with me, I have to work hard to realize that there's any mistake here at all. So many of our mistakes just don't matter afterwards. With this scene, I didn't get the foreshortening correct on this side of the tower. Especially in this lower section, I've allowed too much width. I should have visually compressed it more, made it narrower. When I realized I'd done it, I thought, oh, this has just ruined it. Now the proportions are all wrong. But I was able to massage slightly the proportions in the upper part of the tower and just where I positioned the top of the tower to make it look not nearly as obvious as it looked to me when I did it. But I could have got discouraged and stopped at that point when I hadn't drawn most of the detail of this drawing yet and thought, oh, it's not worth going on. Again, I don't even notice that now. With this drawing of the new town hall in Berlin, I made at the time what felt like a really serious mistake applying the tone. I hadn't actually drawn the corner of this building in place and when I was putting the tone on this end wall here for the shade, I mistook the downpipe for the corner of the wall and I put the tone right up to it. Instead of leaving half of this space as the end of this wall in sunlight. Again at the time I thought, ah, I can't believe it, I've ruined it. And really quite at the very end of what I was doing. And of course now, again, I have to look hard to find the mistake knowing that it's there. But if I'd made that mistake early in the drawing, I might have been tempted to think I should start again, it's not worth finishing. And I saved this one to last because this is probably the worst mistake I made from a technical point of view and from an ability to hide it point of view and I don't know how many of you can see it. But in this view of the Berliner Dom, when I was drawing the dome, again directly in ink, so there's no pencil underline here, I took the dome up too high. My estimate of where the top of the dome was was too high. It didn't allow enough for the foreshortening of the view of the dome from down below. And it wasn't until I'd actually begun to do some guidelines in pen that I realized it was way too high. What did I do? I put the lines in the right place because that would give the brain the correct spot to look at and hopefully not notice the mistakes so badly. Again, if I hadn't got over some of my perfectionistic issues, I would have been tempted to give up at this stage when most of the detail hadn't yet been drawn. And yet there had already been a considerable time commitment if I'd given up on this drawing, I'd spent too long on it to start again at that point. Even though I haven't added tone to this scene and it is just a line drawing, it's not nearly as obvious as when I did it. But if I had stopped when I realized I'd drawn a line in ink over a centimeter higher than it should have been, I would never have learned that it wasn't nearly as important as it felt at the time. That's my second point. Finish every drawing. It's the only way to teach ourselves that 
wherever our particular fears that make us perfectionistic come from, most of the time they're not even real. And the third point is to draw directly in ink. Don't use pencil. Not even any pencil guidelines, only in ink. This will make your perfectionism scream because you can't erase anything. You have to learn to keep drawing to ignore the imperfect detail. To discover all the little tricks of hiding at least some of the mistakes and more importantly realizing that it all doesn't matter nearly as much as our perfectionism tells us that it does and to discover the fun and the freedom in making marks with our pens rather than agonizing over is every line exactly right and to start to see the whole work as the end point not just a series of technically placed precise lines it brings a freedom that is the destroyer of perfectionism. So try doing this. This may be the hardest thing for some of you to do, but draw directly in ink. Don't worry about pencil. Commit to lines that you can't erase to learn to push through and discover the wonderful freedom that we have when we're not being so perfectionistic. What do you think? Are you brave enough for that? It's made such a difference for me personally. My fourth point in escaping a perfectionistic mindset is that it can be helpful to avoid large complex drawings that really push our ability, perhaps our experience, perhaps our technical expertise, because they put a lot of pressure on us. And there's a lot of pressure to get things right, particularly early on, because we have to lay, lay a good foundation. But then also later on, because we don't want to spoil what we've done, and there is simply an awful lot to juggle at the same time. It can be more helpful instead of reaching too high too quickly and, and kind of almost setting ourselves up to fail. To take on simpler subjects that we can do in faster time, that we can succeed at more easily while we build both our technical ability and also our confidence. But what I think is really helpful is to have a drawing that we set ourselves a time limit for. It might be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And that makes us not be so precious about every line, but work towards getting the whole drawing finished in the time that we have. I think for the sake of developing better thinking and drawing habits, I would limit the drawing for this sort of exercise to 15, 20 minutes max. Because what we want is we want the pressure from having to finish the drawing in our time frame to be greater than the pressure we normally feel that it has to be perfect. And if we know that we have to finish it in this short time, then it gives us permission for it not to be as perfect. So we're disconnecting our focus from all the perfectionistic thought and drawing habits by saying, I have to finish this in 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes and I will rigidly stick to that. Also, it's never going to be a drawing that we've already invested an hour of hard work in that now we're afraid of wrecking. We can take more risks because we're only investing a quarter of an hour in it. So that's the fourth point. And the fifth point is we should try and view all of our drawing time as development of our drawing skills and not to view it as producing a perfect artwork. Again, it's having a different story in our head about what's happening. This drawing period I'm going to do now is not about having a perfect drawing because that puts the focus again on something that is perfect. Instead, if I see my art development and my art output as part of a process, as part of a journey that I will be on my entire life, then that takes the pressure of any one particular drawing or artwork I am doing at that point. The problem with perfectionism is it becomes this very narrow focus that by habit we slip into when we pick up a pen and look at the paper. And what we need to do is to do some of these exercises and to structure how we draw differently in a way that won't accommodate the perfectionistic habits that we've picked up, that forces to have a different way of drawing lines, of thinking about what we're doing, that put us under different new pressures that distract us from the old, unhelpful, perfectionistic ones. Keep drawing, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye.